past those cooldowns. And stopping Dardes early would be a great look, because if Dardes is left on his own, he doesn't clear the wave very well, right? If he's behind, that becomes a bit of an issue. If he's able to just taunt Pagan on a Percussion Storm, use that shield wall, get out for free, that's always a good look, right? So I do agree with Myth, and it, it would be a nice, you know, start to the game, of course, if Pagan does get a lead. Doesn't mean it's easy. I mean, once again, Lazbra this time around goes for the blink. Raijin is not getting damage off. At level 2, there is two different ways that Lazbra and Dardes can make sure Percussion Storm gets cancelled, so I'm assuming Pagon puts some points in a Raiju, gets that th lightning crash, gets his dash online, and says, hey, we're probably playing safe, and Panatom confirms that for me. No blink on the Pele. But as the game continues, their team fight could look pretty solid. I think the Ares is a great answer as well to some of this aggression. And right away, they're blinking into Panatom this time, pulling those beads immediately. Looking for the damage. Level 2, you have to imagine, that's a very fearsome 2v2 that you can have in mid. Like you said, they forced the beads early. Pagon's got to feel a little in trouble because now you see dash forward at least from Jardez. That's all without the taunt even at this point. So the pressure, potentially even just around the corner from level 3. Beads forced now by Lazbra. Stun's going to be good. Dash is there. But the reach, it's not enough damage, and instead, Lazbra eats too much. It's the turnaround from the Oni Warriors. It looked like a good fight, but it's two kills to the other side. A great start for Panatom and Pagon. The cooldowns just were not there, and that's honestly, that's a Bumba's dip. If Dardes has any other starter there, he probably has the damage to find that kill, but you don't get Bumba's hammer late game if you start anything else. Unfortunate for Lazbra and Dardes, and Pagon says, you have bullied me for two games in a row no longer. Gonna pop those beads, but at the very least, break out with two kills early on. Pantom and Pagon feeling good about that start. And that really wasn't the bullying coming from the Oni Warriors, right? That was defensive. They were running, and they just so happened to get dove that far underneath the tower. Pagon gets out, and Pantom shows exactly how much damage Pele can do early on. Now, I don't want that to stop. I'm thinking Pantom, after getting a kill like that, can... Translate this over to right lane, look towards Nika, try and play through SOT. Those are both some good options. Looks like trying to gank Pagon was the call. They don't really have that damage though, once again. You're operating off of tier 1 book and, and tier 2 Acorn. Not enough to find the kill on the Pagon. Darda's still working on that book. It's a long one. It's a, and you know what? Every, every rider seems to say that. <laughs> We'll see where the dragons go with it. And realistically, it creates an interesting thing. Because the build for the Athena is so specific, Panatom, though, is looking to extend this lead even further. Nika's under pressure. Knockup's good axe just a little shy of the damage needed. And Nika is going to get to walk away from this one, not without effort from the Warriors. And right now, Shelly, that feels like it is what is on their mind. It is effort, effort, effort. They're even going deep for the purple chain. On to vote. Second chain misses from Genetics. Purple buff secured by the Dragons. But with Netroid stepping up, it was all about the presence and the potential. I mean, the lane being run by the Warriors in every single one you check in. Right early on, that conduit gem, you need some time to really ramp up. One ring, things get a little bit different. A little bit of a scrap. Nika does go in for the ultimate. Sot has not even put a point into his ultimate. Didn't fear he was going to need it. Or maybe he did ult. It was just fearful of his damage. Either way, Nika doesn't quite find that solo kill there. And Sot's got teleport and plenty of regen. Did end up using that storm call just defensively. Ryzen, I mean, Robin's got some good damage, but I think the sustain from Sot probably won the day in that dive. But either way, we saw Panatop did go over to right, attempted to gank. This round. That's what I wanted to see, right? You get a kill early, you don't hit the brakes. You, you try and hit on the gas. If anything, you want to snowball. You want to continue looking for that aggression. Right side of the map was the call. Didn't find much. Now, left side of the map could be an opportunity. If you were able to force out some ultimates, Mike is going to be getting pulled back in. But where's the follow-up? Detroit said, bro, I'm clearing. I don't care about your, <laughs> I don't care about your pull, dude. I need farm. That was a good attempt. And... Honestly, realistically, maybe it was just to make Vote feel pressured, right? Vote still goes for the ult in order to dodge the pull. And so the Freya, a little less safe than what you had a second ago. Unfortunately for the Warriors, Lazbra's right here. And Lazbra's looking for a little bit more. Blink in, stun, going to get beads out. Netroid's low, chains. Slow Lazbra down. 
No one's able to get there to close it out. Netroid, red health, but makes it back to base A-OK. -okay. Bead's gone. And Charlie, that's the opening right now. A lot of people on the Warriors have either Beads down or their CC immunity down. Lazra looking to capitalize on it as soon as he can. Yeah, that was real clutch from Genetics. He doesn't hit that chain, almost certainly finding a kill on a Netroid. The stun, or the slow rather, from Dart would have been enough. Dart as is going to have to channel that dash. Should be fine. Gets away from Tycho Drums. It's Lazra back over here. But either way, if that chain doesn't connect, I'm thinking that's a dead Rama. Lazbro was not able to find it. He's still sitting on the left side of the map, though, and Panatom's not too far behind. Remember, Genetics, ultimate coming up soon. There's no beads on this rat. He does have through the Cosmos, but do you want to use it defensively for a purple buff? He might have to. Boom. Brought out and canceled. Got the damage. Purple buff secured by the Dragons. Oh, good from Genetics. Forces vote up into the sky. Same for Lazbro, who's going to crash down. Four warriors are here. Now you've got Dardes coming in. The taunt's going to be available, but it only pulls Pagon, gets the beads. Darmic Pillar's dropped. And it is a very small jail cell for the Warriors, but one that they will otherwise be unpunished in. The Dragons just don't have the health bar, the resources to find the damage. Purple buff still goes the way of Volt. And Trelly, a lot of ults used on either side. But nothing really massive comes out of it. This is what I was talking about. If you get off to a bad start as Athena, how do you clear the wave? How do you step forward and, and defend anything? I haven't seen much of it. Dardes goes in, but he doesn't have that DPS. He doesn't have cooldown. It's not a fun time landing up against an actual traditional mage when you're behind. And that's all from the overaggression thinking they could find those kills, that first blood. Both Lazbra and Dardes have been feeling the, the brunt of that. A couple dropped kills from Lazbra. He just hasn't had enough damage and genetics. It's very tanky. It's going to take a while to try and find a kill here. And honestly, Pagon might be able to turn this fight once he shows up. The J-Dragons respect that, and they do just give up on the chase. What buff did they have brought that deep? Was that the speed I think buff? that was speed, yeah. <laughs> that came all the way up there with them. And unfortunately now for the Dragons, it's gone. It's just over there to the Warriors. Luckily, there's two of them, right? So you're maybe not that much worse off for wear. But another small win for the Warriors in a place where they honestly weren't even looking for it. And Charlie, they're starting to push themselves, you know, up into the 25, 2600 gold mark. Seven and a half in. I mean, this has been a very oppressive start to the game. Very similar to what we actually got to see yesterday in game five versus the Leviathans. Yeah, it's not easy. I mean, again, I'm not going to say that the Jade Dragons gambled their whole game on that first blood, but the early game, at the very least, they have forfeited so much pressure for dying in that 2v2. And now, yeah, playing through Nika might be nice. Playing through uh, you vote and getting this fray online might be nice. But you've seen what Pantom has done with that lead. He hasn't stopped looking for aggression. He hasn't just given up the farm. He has been right side of the map, left side of the map, invade. This purple buff doesn't belong to vote as long as Panatom is here. He can keep trying to go in for steals, but the Pele is not leaving him alone. And Panatom even now just trying to get some damage on the mic. Gonna be a 2v1 in mid, Pagon in trouble. The dash gets canceled and there, they finally find exactly what they were looking for before. And they find an open kill on Pagon 20 seconds before those beads come back up. And 20 seconds, he's gonna be <laughs> wishing he had. Bro, I, I really wanna see a highlight reel of how many times Pagon has died with his beads off a 10 second cooldown. <laughs> Vanatom should be able to get out of range with the beads, but waits out the top perfectly. Tardes plays that so clean. He pre-beads the taunt, and Dardis said, I didn't taunt you yet, bro. Waits for the CC of Uni to run out. They are able to grab that kill. I don't think there's any follow-up here. Dardes shouldn't feel too threatened. If anything, Dardes might want to go in on this. Yeah, they were happy to get pulled here. Dardes, the shell needs to be used. Ult from Netroid. It's going to ring true. Second shot doesn't connect. One and three do, but it's not enough damage. Dardes gets to walk away from there. The chain's body blocked by Mike. Dardes uses the reach to turn some damage around. Now, Pagon's deep, has the beads this time around. Can he get the Thunder Crash off? Yes, over the wall. And the escape is going to be there. Genetics, you had called it earlier, pretty tanky. So a dangerous position, honestly. No ult from Netroid there if he, if he didn't have it. Probably another kill for the Dragons. Maybe even Pagon, if he had mistimed that and it had been two seconds left on the beads, it would have been yet another one but as it stands it's two to two as we go into 10 minutes and it's still that 2500 gold in favor of the warriors
Certainly is, but they've shown some signs of life, right? The Jade Dragon saying, hey, even though we're behind, we can still find some opportunities to look for kills. Some important power spikes are being hit as well. Nika already extremely tanky, has Phalanx, has Oni Hunter's Garb, as far as I'm concerned, shouldn't be dying anytime soon. Lazarus starts stacking up the Soul Eater, some of that Panatom already finished, because he went at first item. And more importantly, Dardes, who needs cooldown, working on a Breastplate. The, this Athena, if, you're, if you want to clear waves, if you want to be able to grab anything, you gotta be able to step forward and actually use your cooldowns. As we see Genetics go for no escape as they try and start something. Lathra takes a lot of damage though. Pagon going in, has the drums at least to kill off Mike. Dash from Lazbur gets him just far enough. He's not gonna worry about it. Single pick from the Warriors. And Trelly, I was thinking with this amount of a rotation, maybe you go for a Fury, but Metroid's gonna start pushing the tower. We've got Panatom, Genetics on this side of the map as well. So that's tier one forfeit by vote. Now you go for the gold fury, and that's exactly what the warriors are going to start up. And the kills look even. The taunt onto Pagon's good, uh, you know, beads down for another 70. Maybe if Lazar can loop around and find something, there's a kill to happen there. But otherwise, with this gold fury officially going to the warriors, we have to talk about oppressive gold leads. And we have to talk about them where they are. Kill does happen finally for Lazra in mid. Did loop around, stop Pagon's back, find exactly what he needs, but it is still, at this point, approaching 4,000. The way, I'm sorry, 5,000. As the Warriors continue to just find every victory they seem to be open to, I guess. Big, every yeah. victory they can. There you go. Big, big farm in dual lane <laughs> is what I've realized, right? Because Vote, that tower that went down. His buffs don't belong to him. Two-level deficit that Netroid's been able to grab so far. Same for Mike in, in genetics. I believe genetics is very close to level 10 at this point. So uh, essentially 75% of a level there. You don't want to take this trade, Vote. Does not have much damage, but might have to fight it. Doesn't have the pulse for a bit. Has to juke around. Let's see how much damage he really has. Vegas. Buy some time for Netroid up to the sky. One shot canceled immediately. Rolls forward for the autos. Misses one shot. Now you've got Mike there. And the Dharmic Pillars come out. But does Vote have anything to save him? He has the Aegis. It keeps him alive. But the pull Wait, is he better. He had beads. He had beads. He thought it was going to kill him. So he didn't beads. It didn't kill him. He could have beads and lived he that. He could have just gone out of there. He really thought. I mean, I, I honestly, I get it. Right? Because you're Freya. Your Valkyrie's discretion is down. If he beads is that and the pull kills him. He gets then, ganked again, yeah, and then he's nothing. like three levels behind. But if he beats, he also lives there. Unfortunate for Vote. I understand the play. He thought, hey, if I beat and die, it's two deaths. Either way, let's see how much damage you really can do. And beautiful play by Netroid as well. All he was doing there by stalling in the air was trying to wait out the pulse. He said, hey, I'm going to snipe once and then go in for a auto attack. Genetics is here, blinks in, forces through the cosmos from Lazra. Has to ult defensively, and despite it being three to four, the Oni Warriors are dominating the map. I mean, and and that is somehow even still an understatement. I mean, dominating. They have made this map theirs. Banatom has the beads. Is so unfrightened of Dardes and Mike. Doesn't have to pop him for the taunt. Did take half his health for the trouble though. And that I think symbolizes where the Warriors are at mentally. Maybe more so what Genetics is doing. He's just hanging out in the jungle in their face the kind of ever-present try-me threat available. And that's what the Warriors have. And this is what I, I was really expecting more when I brought up that point in game one about the clashing of style. We got a slower Warriors pace game that time around, but this is what it feels like they find their success in, is when they are able to run it down, their early game gets them so far ahead, it changes everything. And even now, I mean, Genetics is just scoffing at the damage. The Dragons throw at him. Darmy Pillars thrown up by Mike defensively as the Tycho drums come rolling down mid from Pagon. Not enough damage to find any kills, but Dardes and Mike are both poked out. Pyromancer's up. And when the Warriors have been playing the map this well, they're, of course, going to try to continue. Now, Nika looking for a repeat performance from the Amaterasu to try and walk in and steal this one. Not taking too much damage in the process from Sot. Gets dropped, actually, by the Warriors. They're going to turn, look for the kill. Pyromancer goes their way. Nika has to run. And it's the leap over the wall. Chase is still slightly on from Sot, but it's not going to result in too much else. And Charlie, it's Sot that I actually want to zone in on because this Chalk on the gauntlet of Thebes that he had gone day one, game one, I, 
if I remember correctly, was kind of the start of what was the wildest set of solo lane plays that I had gotten to see in a long time. It has been, it depends on the character, obviously. In this case, I think that, you know, Chalk provides a lot of utility for your team. So just being as tanky as possible and resetting your cooldowns is a good call. So Sot, once he does actually make some impactful rotations, it's going to be so annoying. If you're looking at what the Jade Dragons want to do, Freya, she wants to just build attack speed and free cast, and that's something that Chalk is not going to care about too much, right? That rain, slowing attack speed, get to the back line, force out Valkyrie's discretion with your storm call. He can do a lot to the back line, to the ADC of the Jade Dragons, and that's the call, right? Build Oni Hunter's Garb, get as tanky as possible. Force fights. Lazmar needs to get up into the sky. Should be able to know the right. You just does too much wow. damage. This man just finished that obsidian shard and plenty of DPS coming from Tycho drums. Lazmar's way too far forward. Primal Fury should go the way of the Warriors. That does it seems like everything else so far this game. If it's on the map, it's theirs. And right now that seems to include the dragon's lives. Vote. Pushed under tier two, forced to ult away, manages to survive 7,700 gold. And if we're talking 35 minutes, you expect that to be, oh, they, they got a fire giant, they've knocked down every single tower. No, this is tier ones, 16 minutes in, and oppressive play from the Warriors, Chelly. And there's not a whole lot the dragons have as an option to really counter it. I mean, all six towers, not only up, but the tier ones are all healthy on the side of the Warriors. The only neutral objective that's up is the Fire Giant. They can't even secure their own buffs. Nope, they can't. I mean, Vote is a late game hyper carry that does not seem like he will ever get to that point. Pagon is, a pen is intensely playing Jungle Raijin, just constantly tanking every other lane, because why is he going to sit there in mid? Fortunately for Nika, has went about as tanky as you can get, so should be just fine to all this aggression, but everyone else it's a bit of an issue. Dardes has been trying to match that rotation and to his credit has been able to stay relatively even XP wise considering how much Pagon and the Oni Warriors have been able to accrue for themselves gold wise. But Netroid's here rotating over to the right. Is this a fire giant attempt or a jungle fight that they're looking for? Stepping forward, just looking for anything. Genetics is gonna be able to find a big ult here. And then he's gonna go immediately forcing ults on to Lazbra and Dardes, forced to use theirs to retreat and stay safe. Vote is one, two levels down. Let's call it two and a half because it was three just seconds. Yeah, he, he can't leave. He literally is tethered to the lane. At uh, this I point. don't want to see Vote anywhere near the right side of the map until that tier one tower is gone at the very least. Uh, and he's not even a hunter, so you, you don't have the benefit of, hey, this tier one is going to get knocked down easily. And so, in the time it takes the Warriors to do a fire giant, Vote's gotten half the tower over on left. The Dragons have nothing they can do in response. Finally, some small victories. But Trelly, sometimes a small victory is oppressively small, and I feel like that Tier 1 is a drop in the ocean that the Warriors have managed to amass in terms of a lead. Yep, now the Tier 2 is what the Warriors are after. They're even positioning aggressively as if they want to go in for this Phoenix. Still 18 minutes in, it wouldn't be easy to grab a Phoenix, but Sot might be able to tank this one up. Let's see if the only Warriors want to step forward. Seems like they're sort of feeling this one out. Well, the Dragons go in, Taunt's good. Netroid has to use the beads immediately. Knock up from the Pele, finds a little bit. And it's Panatom deep in the back, spreads the damage out, looking for Vote primarily, unable to find it. Phoenix still standing. Tycho drums damage, good onto Nika. Might be tanky, can't do much. Snipes, ring true, Netroid kills off Vote, and that's an opening that the Warriors needed. They can now walk in and take this Phoenix. 30 seconds, no Nika, no Vote. Too many towers up and too early in the game to tr try and go for an end. So instead, the Warriors are going to back, reset. And Trelly, at this point, wouldn't be surprised if they have a lot of money to spend as well. I mean, this is, yeah, you can see yeah. the oh damage. My God. You can see the damage differential <laughs> so clear. I mean, Genetic steps forward, gets a beautiful taunt from Dardes, but tanks up those Phoenix shots like it's nothing. Even with the Darwin Pillars, he's able to just walk right through them, and there was no follow up. It really is just an initial engage. And if they're not dying, there isn't much chase down potential. Nico is in the back line, but eventually has ended up getting feared back in or taunted back in by Tycho Drums from Pagon. And no matter how tanky you are as a Robin, if you're getting just taunted constantly into three, four damage dealers from the Oni Warriors, you will be falling down. I think that's the big difference maker. 
The Rat is, isn't able to get to the back line and confirm some of these kills. Nika is essentially diving by himself. And if it's not a taunt into a Dharma Pillars into a pick, the Jade Dragons can't find it. Now, and it's about uh, maybe tenacity in <laughs> your defense. It, it, it's, it's wild, Shelly, this early on. I mean, I don't even know if I, I, I can advocate stepping up to a Tier 2 to try and even soft defense it. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on the Dragons, and really, it's on vote right now to get farm, to get experience, and to get gold. And this Freya at level 16, it feels like, especially without a, a standard mage, you might not have the defense necessary. This might be the best case scenario for you, is if Lazbar can do something, but he's just proxying right now. Vote, forcing the ult. Thanks to the no escape from genetics, Mike has no such grace. Pulled in, killed off, and it is 5v4 now as Lazarus rejoins the fight. Snipes coming out, and all three shots connect from Netroid. Sends Vote out, opens up this Phoenix, and it's a second bird down on the base of the Dragons. Yeah, two Phoenixes down off of a pre-20-minute fire giant. He's insane. There's no way they look for the end call, but at the very least, that Tier 2 in mid could be their target. Lazarus is attempting to pull the minions away so they can't go in for the Tier 2. But at this point, why not just tank it up, right? You have so much damage, you have so much tank stats, and no one on the side of the J Dragons is feeling confident enough to try and defend. They're playing it smart, though. They decide to go in for the Oni Fury instead before pushing down a Tier 2 tower. But with three Phoenixes, the base is broken. The J Dragons are saying one thing. Hey, at least now that our Phoenixes are gone, the farm has to come to us, right? <laughs> the, the fire minions are going to push in no matter what. We can just stay here, and then we can get more gold. And then maybe flashbacks to game one, though. They were on the happy end of Winions. Those fire minions can become a lot to handle. Yep. I'm watching Vote with rapt interest. And, and honestly, I'm watching the jungle beside him a little bit more. Not just for Warrior's presence, but, but maybe some ward coverage from the Dragons. None so far on the board for him. A lot of deep wards from the Warriors to catch any rotations, especially around this tier two. Fire Giant wore off just a few seconds ago, so it's going to be back in about a minute. Genetics tanks up the tier two. What a vast difference it makes when Netroid is there and not there. Well, the tier two in mid will go down, and Lazbro will find, well, unfortunately, the black and white version of Smite. Panatom picks up a solo kill in right, just as easy as you can imagine. The ult gets used. And Charlie, there is no fight back from the Dragons in the foreseeable future. Yeah, it's funny. The second I saw Panatom see Lazbro in the jungle the first time, I assumed a 1v1 would break out. And then Panatom's like, eh, I don't know if I have enough damage to kill him before he ults. And then this time a 1v1 did break out, and he's like, let's just see. You know, maybe yeah. Volcanic Light <laughs> will come through. And <laughs> just, funny. just the hit into one auto in a, in a Pyroclast, that was enough to confirm that kill. Like, just so much damage coming from a full build Pele at this point. Lazbra could not hope to match it, unless he just channeled the ult the second that Panatom was even in the, the, the same area code as him. He was not making it out of that one. Second Fire Giant goes down 23 minutes into the game. And that means these Titans are gonna be zooming down mid lane with the beacon captured. The Oni Warriors should have no problem getting this last Phoenix. The question is, are they able to go in for the end call after? Remember, still early on, but the builds don't look it, right? I mean, besides starter items, or besides the, the recipes, rather, everyone's maxed out here on the Oni Warriors. They are feeling very confident as they march up mid. You're trying to get there if you're the Dragons. Fire Minion's about to go towards the right side, Phoenix, so someone needs to catch those. Vote has pushed up heavily on the left. Caught up in some terms of levels, 18 to 20 on Netroid. Should be a mid Phoenix here, no problem. The fight is what I'm concerned with. I was going to say, this is actually a huge deal. The Titan leaving the base right now. It was the Dragons that captured that beacon and got it. It's going to buy them a little bit of time here to work against the Warriors. And time is what you need when you've got a Freya. Straight shot from the ult. Lasbur decides not to go in. That's exactly what I was looking for. Now the Titan, well, it's going to go down fast. The Warriors have a massive lead. 20,000 gold. And they are going to continue to just stand menacingly at the base. Nika's the target. Nika's getting burned. Has to ult. And that Mystic Rush gets him over the wall. Vote into the sky. Can he get out of here? Snipes from Netroid. 
Not gonna find the connection they need. They step into the Titan room, try to get some damage out there. Lazbra, half health. Sot with the silence opens up a lot. Nika goes in to try and zone, but gets killed off. The Warriors say no to a 3-0. They step into this game and they just hit different. The Dragons, no chance to respond since minute one. And Trelly, we're at least going four. Well, Gore, at that, after that first blood where the two kills were dropped, I said, hey, the J Dragons didn't entirely throw their game off of that one play. The truth is they did. That one kill where they thought they could first blood Pagon, which turns into a first blood for Panatom and a backup kill for Pagon,